Don, one of the most powerful probative questions about reality is how did our universe begin? And in general, there are two kinds of answers. One is developed from uh, observational astronomy, now enriched by quantum physics understanding. The other has been more traditionally a theological understanding that different religions have different um, uh, takes on, on how the universe came to be, invoking gods or various other things. You're in a unique position to, <laughs> to be straddling both of those in terms of a quantum physicist and a believer in God. So give me from each perspective how you see it and then how they might come together. Yes, okay, well maybe just briefly about what we, what we see in physics and cosmology, we see that the universe is expanding, which means that distant galaxies are, getting, are flying apart, they're getting further apart. So if we extrapolate back, we find that things were closer together, that, that we say that the universe was smaller in the past, and it seems to have been very much smaller and, and, and hotter in the past. We don't yet know whether, it, whether if you extrapolate back, you get to what's called a Big Bang singularity, that there's an edge to space-time, a beginning to space-time, or whether there might have been a bounce, or maybe it just gets so fuzzy that time becomes not well defined and you can't say what it's doing as a function of time. That, th those are open questions. Now, as an evangelical Christian, I would believe that, that God did create the whole universe, and, and I don't believe he just created the beginning and then let it run. I believe he creates the whole thing, but I do believe that he uses very elegant laws for creating the whole thing. I mean, in other words... What do you mean by the whole thing? You mean the whole... The, the, whole, the, whole, the whole history. history. Yes, the whole, the whole history of the universe. In other words... So, uh, so it's not just the beginning and, and, and going on by itself. It's a, creating the, the entire block? Yes, the entire... Right. The entire block of... Four-dimensional the, 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 the time. Four, the four-dimensional block of the <laughs> universe. And, of course, in the quantum theory, this would be <laughs> sort of like a whole Everett multiverse a block of many, of many different histories. So I think God creates the, the whole thing and not, you know, not just the beginning. But the interesting thing... That's a, that's a lot of work to do that. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I believe God is infinite and, okay. he, could, and, and, and right. he could do that. And in some sense, of course, I don't know, the energy he takes is probably not, you know, not really we can measure from our standpoint. So I don't know exactly how much, how much work it, <laughs> work okay. it, it, okay. it took. But I do... Anyway, so I do think that, yeah, that he's created the whole thing. And it's, 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 but he has created it. He, he seems to use very elegant laws. Now, these laws are his own invention. So it's not, I'm sa not saying that there's some laws imposed on God. It's just God has chosen to use very simple patterns for creating the, the, the future time from the past time. And he creates it in such an order that it appears to be that if he gave some, say there's some supernatural angel that could understand all of this well enough. I mean, we can't because we're too puny, but, but if there was some supernatural angel who could fully understand it, if, if God told this angel exactly what the initial state was and the laws he, he was going to use, then the angel from those should be able to do what God is doing for the rest of it. Now that doesn't mean that, it, that God didn't have free choice in doing it, it's just mean that God chose to use those particular laws and, and that particular initial state to, to evolve the universe. And that would become completely deterministic, even, even though it is this vast uh, ensemble of, of probabilistic universes the way we look at it. Yes, I think in my own view, there's not really randomness in quantum theory, except there is the uncertainty, of course, as to which branch we right now are on. There's, it's sort of like the same uncertainty as to the uncertainty of why I'm why my present experience is seeing the universe from this direction and you're seeing it from, you know, from, from that direction. I think both are, both are, you know, both, both are real. And, but in some sense, of course, if you start asking questions, well, why, what's the problem? Am I seeing it from my point of view? Then, you know, that, then, then you could get probabilities in by just asking those sorts of, mm -hmm. those, those sorts of questions. But, but I do believe, I, I, I guess I am one that strongly believes that God created the entire universe from nothing, and that, and in my view, that means he had to totally determine it. There was nothing else that could determine how the universe behaved other than God, and so he's the total, total determiner of, of the entire universe, by which I mean this entire Everett multiverse of all the different histories. Now, many quantum uh, physicists who do believe in God would say that God created quantum physics to allow a uh, a flexibility or an uncertainty uh, to play in the universe so that human uh, um, interactions, human free will, uh, <clears throat> some uncertainty in the future can be built into the system. 
Yeah, I mean, Einstein said that God does not play dice, and I tend to go even further and say that God could not play dice, if by playing dice I mean using something that gives random results that are not already determined by, by what God's doing. In my view, God would have to create the dice, and that would mean that he would have be determining how the, how the dice would behave. So that's assuming there was absolute... God has loaded dice. Yeah, that, and, and, and it's not only loaded, it's totally loaded. Well, of course, it could be the ever thing that the, the, the dice do land up in different configurations, but there's a definite measure for each one, and that's, that's, that's the, you know, de mm -hmm. determined by God. So, it's, it's, so in some sense, I mean, that is under the assumption that there's no random choices. There's nothing out there for God to bring in and use. We can, of course, use atoms or radioactive <laughs> atoms that God has given us and from God's view, of course, there's a certain amplitude for them to do the different things, it's all determined. But from our point of view, we can only see one outcome. So for us, that looks, the result looks random. And we're using something that God has given us and we're looking at only, at only a part. And that part that we look at, in some sense, looks, looks random because we don't see the other parts. And you're using that as an analogy of the, of the random uh, uh, decay of atoms within, within, one, uh, within one kind of uh, atomic structure uh, that has different rates, the randomness of any given atom, as, as an exemplification of the entire reality that God has programmed that same sort of, 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 of certainty into the entirety of reality from the beginning. That's, the creation of, the, of, of from the beginning is this totality throughout all time and all space. Yes, yes, I was I was doing that. And I was I guess I was also making the point that when we throw dice, we're using something that we didn't create, and and therefore it's something that we don't we can, we don't we can't predict what's happening because we're not the total determiners of it. But but God, if He had nothing other than Himself to start with, I think that God doesn't even have the opportunity to be able to have randomness, that, that he had to create everything and therefore I think he had to determine it all.